We're only concerned right now with the last 23 years of war. My war was defined. I had an enemy. I knew who they were. We fought a country. The veterans from Iraq and Afghanistan have been in their country where friend and foe look exactly alike. There's no difference between those who like America and those who dislike America. They're dressed the same, speak the same language, eat the same food, live in the same kind of houses. Just being there is stressful. Just walking the streets is stressful. I stressed out, 16 million of us served, maybe three or four in, in three or four million in combat. And combat is stressful. It is not meant to be to kill other people, to be trained to kill, and then have no training or no skills to get over that. So the answer is yes. Every person who goes into combat comes back stressed out. I'll just add a word. There, there is a distinction between illness and damage. Combat does not improve you. You cannot be in a combat situation and say, I'm a better person or a healthier person. Some people handle it better, other people handle it more poorly, but that's not the issue. There is always some that damage, whether it is clinical or not. There is still some, some residual damage. And thank you, Dr. Kanko. They're also finding actually that PTS injury is uh, contagious, that families, caregivers, begin to exhibit the same symptoms of post-traumatic stress injury. In, in addition, there was a study on uh, inner city school kids in Los Angeles, 10-year-old kids coming to school with symptoms of post-traumatic stress injury because of their living environment, never sleeping, you know, violence in the neighborhood. It's, a, it's an epidemic. President Schneider, would you please address that? Your thoughts? We're all for you. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't hear that President Schneider said, we're all for it. Yes, I mean, our, our goal is to see this as a vaccine against, against stress. And again, we're focusing here, I should say, we're focusing on veterans and their families. The David Lynch Foundation, it's important for you to know, has provided scholarships for a quarter of a million inner city school kids to learn to meditate. We're also working with women and girls who've been victims of domestic abuse and rape and, vi and uh, violence. Many of you know this, many uh, editorials have come out on military sexual trauma now shifting back. 19,000 women in the US military, victims of rape and abuse from their male counterparts. And so the David Lynch Foundation and Operation Warrior Wellness is absolutely dedicated to um, bringing this. And, and I want to segue here just for a moment. Did you want to say something? Uh, yes. Yeah. Go ahead, Dr. Peggy. Peg. We have presented to all the academies. Uh, we were, uh, <coughs> Norwich is trying to get the word out. We are in constant uh, communication with all the academies. So we can only let them know what's happening and see what they want to do. But it's, it's moving so fast, as I said at the beginning. I think I've been practicing this for over 40 years, and I think for many years the notion of meditation which in society was like this, and it's just been the last few years that it's just, we can't keep up with the demand. We just can't keep up with the demand. Well, those of you who are here in New York City, um, when you go out, or in the uh, five boroughs in the tri-state area, when you go out, you're going to receive a book on Transcendental Meditation. You're also a New York Times best-selling book that was written by a psychiatrist from the NIMH, and also a Rita Cosby's book about her father. But the book on Transcendental Meditation called Transcendence explains more about the technique. You also have in your packet a business card, and on that business card has contact information, and you can call our offices here in New York, and we can arrange a course. And yeah, just that. yeah, and um, hopefully I'll, one of us, there's Peter Travallis who is in the back right there, is a Vietnam vet who teaches veterans and teaches business people. There's many, many highly skilled teachers. I would say all meditations are not the same. 
certainly just like all medicines are not the same, we have to look at the evidence. So if you're interested in Transcendental Meditation, be sure you get a certified teacher and that card has that information. What we do is we partner with other organizations that offer solutions. We're very bullish on partnering because we know that meditation alone is not the solution. We're, for example, we received a grant from the um, Veterans on Wall Street. Veterans on Wall Street is a collaboration of five banks, and they're working to bring uh, veterans jobs on Wall Street. Okay, what, what do we do to provide, handle the stress for those young men and women who are going into the workplace? We work with Urban Zen, we're working with Wounded Warrior Project, many, 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 many organizations. So we love collaborating. There are many forms of meditation. There's something called mindfulness meditation. Has anybody heard of that term before, mindfulness meditation? Basically, science, medical science has identified in the big umbrella of meditation um, three different uh, me mechanics, mechanism. One is called um, focused attention. And that is sort of a Zen meditation or something where you're concentrating, you're focused your attention on, on some specific point your breath or a sound or something. It's concentration. The other form of meditation is called open monitoring, and that's more of a mindfulness approach. And a mindfulness approach is sort of like witnessing your thoughts dispassionately, not judging your thoughts, being present and mindful. And the third approach me mechanism is called automatic self-transcending, and that is what we find in transcendental meditation. So what I want to do now is take a moment and explain what happens in TM, and that will be as a preface to actually answering your question. <laughs> so I haven't forgotten your question, I'm just putting it in context. When I explain TM, I use an analogy of what happens. And I use the analogy of an ocean. And when Admiral Schneider is always out on the high seas and 30, 40, 50 foot waves, you could say, oh my god, the ocean is just tumultuous, big high waves. But if you did a cross section of the ocean at that point, you have these 30 or 40, 50 foot high waves and the ocean is a mile, let's say it's a mile deep. So you got waves that are 30, 40, 50 feet and the ocean is a mile deep. And the depth of the ocean, silent. Now, those waves on the surface, natural. The silence at the depth of the ocean, equally natural, equally. By analogy, we say the mind, we hypothesize. Remember I said you could be skeptical, so you don't like, have to buy into this thing. But the, 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 the analogy that we use, we use, we say the surface of our mind is the active thinking mind. That's all the things we have to do. I got to do this, and I got to do that. You know, everybody, you know what that is? All the lists of the goddess. I got to go here, I got to do that, I got to call him, I got to call her. I got to find, I got to make a list, I got to find the list that I made. And I gotta relax, I gotta get that in there. So it's like the active thinking mind, agitated, excited thinking mind. And we all have the thought, and particularly a veteran, I would like to have some inner calm, right? Some inner peace, some inner strength, some inner inspiration. We're too caught up here. Transcendent, well, Mindfulness meditation is a process that witnesses or observes the thinking mind. There are many t approaches to mindfulness. Dispassionately observes the thoughts that one has. Focused attention is concentrating and trying to clear your mind of thought, trying to stop the waves from being, they call it the monkey mind, being so crazy all over the place. In Transcendental Meditation, and I'm really close to answering your question. In Transcendental Meditation, we don't, we, we understand that the thought process, all the gotta, gotta, gotta's, is natural. But there's a level inside each human being, every one of us, that is already quiet, already calm, already settled, wide awake. And in Transcendental Meditation, we don't manipulate or try and stop the mind from thinking. 
That's no can do. <laughs> Clear your mind of thoughts. We just allow the mind to effortlessly relax, effortlessly settle down and experience quieter levels of the thought process. Same thoughts we could have in meditation that we have outside of meditation, but just less agitated, less aggravated, quieter, calmer, settled. And when that happens, as we heard from Dr. Kaplan, and we know from the research, the body gains a state of rest in many regards deeper than sleep. Now to answer your question, that deep rest, physiological rest, allows deeply rooted stresses to be dissolved that sleep doesn't even get rid of. And they get dissolved in a very comfortable, gentle, natural way. Very comfortable. I mean, is Luke, where's Luke? Luke. Oh, there you are. Um, Luke, what was your, did you have on, so the, the point is having taught hundreds, maybe even, and worked with over my 40 years, many thousand veterans, it is a rare instance if a person has a flashback in TM. It usually is associated with something very comfortable and easy and, com and just relaxing. If a person is having a difficult time, we have them meditate for 10 minutes rather than 20 minutes. We have specially trained teachers who know how to work with veterans. So I used your question to put a big, to answer a bigger picture and to say that that isn't an issue. And if it one in a thousand, it does come up, then we, ha then we have specially trained teachers. How to work comfortably with that person to allow that stress to be dissolved and not in an uncomfortable way. And Luke, would you like to comment on that? Yeah. What I've found is Every time I had a question or thought maybe I was doing something wrong during the technique, is that I needed to quit worrying about it because everything I was doing was okay. And for me, I thought, my mind's too busy, my mind's too busy, I must not be meditating properly. Just relax, it's okay, because whatever happens naturally is a part of that process. And no matter how busy my mind was, I was getting a benefit out of that meditation. So even though sometimes I even thought about situations in Afghanistan while I was meditating, that was okay. And no matter what, I was getting rid of stress during that session. So I've never had serious flashbacks, per se, but uh, I have thought about my experiences during, and I've thought about a lot of other things during, and it's all okay. 